So in this video we're going over the halohydration mechanism and you're basically adding an X2 gas, X is a halogen, so a halogen gas I2, Cl2 or Br2 and water and you're adding it to an alkene and you're getting a trans product with OH on the more substituted carbon and your halogen on the least substituted carbon and so it's a trans product so this one is a wedge, that one's a dash or sorry, this is a dash and that's a wedge or this is a wedge and that's a dash. So they have to be on opposite sides and it's going to be a 50-50 split since these two molecules are um, equivalent in terms of stability. And so what's the mechanism? Well, the mechanism is how you would start if you're just doing halogenation. So you basically have a source of electrons and your X2 can act as an electrophile and just like in halogenation we form a bridge, right? So this can either be two wedges with a plus charge, or if it comes from the bottom, it can be two dashes and a plus charge, right? And the next question is, where is this plus charge most localized? Well, it's going to be on the atom that's most stable. And if we look at uh, this carbon over here, it's actually a secondary carbon as opposed to this one, which is a primary carbon. It only has one carbon attached to it, where this carbon has two carbons attached to it. So because of hyperconjugation, the plus charge is most stable on this carbon, and that's where your uh, electrons are going to attack. And so you want to think about, okay, what sources of electrons do I have? I have X minus and I have water. Then the next question you want to ask yourself is what's going to attack here? It's actually going to be whatever the most stable nucleophile is. And in this case, water is a better nucleophile. So sorry, not stable nucleophile, whatever is a better nucleophile. In this case, water is the better nucleophile. So it's actually going to attack at the carbon with the most positive charge. And so what we get is when you open that three-membered ring, this wedge doesn't change. Right? Nothing is happening to that wedge. And so it's just going to stay a wedge. Right? But the water is actually attacking from underneath because if you attack from the top, it's already blocked by this bond over here. So the only place it can attack is from underneath, and so that's why you get a wedge. And then next we have an unstable positive charge. So we just take another water, which has lone pairs, and depronate that hydrogen, and we get the first product. So this is our first product and we're going to do the exact same thing here on the bottom and then the X stays on the wedge and the OH sorry X stays on the dash and the OH goes on the wedge and so this is why we have two products because when you start from an alkane sorry from an alkene which is sp2 hybridized, it's planar, doesn't have any stereochemistry, and you add that halogen, you get stereochemistry, but since you started with something without stereochemistry, you get two separate products with equal stability. And that's the reason why we have um, two separate products, and the reason they're trans is because the water has to attack from the opposite side as the three-membered ring. So hopefully that helped clear up some confusion. Hopefully you understand it better. And thanks a lot for watching.